Most people remember 8mm as the most popular type of camcorder cassette at the end of the 20th century. But these four tapes actually all contain digital audio recordings and they're different to each other. Now these first two also contain video recordings and these two contain multi-channel digital audio only. So let's have a look at these different formats and uh, demonstrate them all. Here we have an analog Hi8 recorder. This particular model, the EVS9000E, is one of the few which supports both analog and digital audio tracks. So I've started by recording a few minutes of colour bars with no audio. Then I'm going to do an audio dub to overlay music onto the picture. I might say, I could do audio dub with my whole but little VHS camcorder. Yes, some could, but here's the thing. Even the very best VHS machine with hi-fi sound could only audio dub in the ultra low quality linear mono audio track. This Hi8 deck is carrying out an audio dub with a fairly high quality stereo digital audio. This is one of the very few domestic models of any video recorder to offer good quality stereo audio dub while at the same time also retaining a high quality independent non-dubbed stereo audio track which could be mixed in at playback. So there are four high quality audio tracks in all, two from the normal analog recording, FM stereo, and two from the PCM digital recording. For the serious domestic or semi-pro video editor back in the 1990s, Hi8 offered features like this, which made the VHS-C format look badly outdated. Now, I'm going to rewind this tape and you'll see me fumbling around trying to remember how to use the audio dub feature. Eventually I press the right buttons, you can see a really rough quality partial image of the original colour bars recording. This terrible picture is only put on this monitor so that you can see where you are on the tape as you dub the new audio. Now let's rewind the tape and play it back with the PCM digital stereo audio track that we have dubbed on. We also get the benefit of a digital time based corrector built into this sophisticated machine. Next. Take a look at this digital audio logo on some hugely expensive professional Sony audio equipment that was used by recording studios in the early days of CD. That same logo is about to appear here on a sweet little EVS800 model Video 8 recorder that sits on top of a professional PCM decoder also used in studios, primarily that one was used with Betamax. This EVS800 Video 8 machine can record pictures and PCM stereo sound like the EVS9000E we saw earlier but this can do something else too. We're going to demonstrate the machine playing six sets of stereo recordings which it has made on a normal Video 8 tape. When used in this way the tape contains no picture, just these audio recordings. I've already made up a tape with six tracks of stereo PCM digital audio and here we have track one playing. I then rewind the tape, press program track up button and then we can play the second track. Now the rest of the six tracks can be selected in just the same way. While we're going through those, here are a few other things to mention about this format. I took this six track stereo audio only recording from this EVS 800 and went to play it on the EVS 9000E we saw earlier to demonstrate that there would be no picture or sound and the mach machine can't make any sense of it. What actually happened was a huge surprise. Whilst it didn't play properly, the EVS 9000E kept changing from LP and it to SP and back. It did, however, attempt to play the first stereo audio recording from the EVS 800's all audio recording. Well, I didn't expect that. So clearly the version with the pictures included and the version with the six stereo audio tracks and no picture are identical at the PCM digital level. The EVS 800 instruction book sort of implies that if this were to happen, it would be with the last of the six PCM digital audio recordings, not the first. But I think we can put that down to a bit of artistic license in the diagram of the recording process. One thing I've not yet been able to fully prove from the data sheets is the bit depth of these PCM digital recordings on 8mm. I suspect it's 8-bit. A quick look at the EVS 9000E service manual gives us some indication of an 8 to 10 bit processing going on in there, so it looks like it's 8 bit native. Neither 8 nor 10 bit is really ideal. 
It means that the dynamic range is limited and certainly explains why the sound distorts badly if the audio levels are set even a little bit too high. With only a 32 kilobits per second sample rate too, the results are well short of CD quality, but I found it perfectly acceptable for recording TV programmes back in the day. My young helper here, Scott, is recording me on a digital 8 camcorder. Say hello, Scott. Hi. Digital 8 uses the DV codec, the same as is used on mini DV tapes and professional DV cam tapes, so the picture and sound quality should be excellent. This particular camera is struggling a little bit in low light, but even so, sound quality is excellent. Finally, we have a professional multi-track digital audio format called DTRS. Clearly Sony and Tascam work together on this format, since these two machines are strikingly similar. But we're going to demonstrate using a slightly later version of the format, which supports more bit depth. So this makes up to 24-bit high-resolution digital audio recordings of up to 8 channels, and permits dubbing of any channel independently. The first thing you have to see is that what the VU meters do at switch on it's best to stand back a bit and squint at it. Then you see the words Tascam HR scroll through the LEDs. Someone must have got a bonus for that. This particular tape has six channels recorded. The machine comes complete with digital output connectors of the AES EBU standard, provided you have suitable adapter cables. There are four such outputs, each of the two channels, which are generally used as a stereo pair, but could be used independently. I have one such connector going to my Tascam SSR250N digital audio recorder, making a pure lossless digital copy of the contents of the first two tracks of this tape. However, in that arrangement, I would have to run the tape for up to four passes to get all of the eight channels recorded. But I also have a portable Tascam DR100 Mark II digital audio recorder, which has an SPDIF input. And for these purposes, we consider the AES EBU signal to be interchangeable with SPDIF. So I can connect simultaneously the portable and the larger SSR250N and record four channels at once. What do you think of the sound quality, Alex? It's awesome. No, really, it's awesome. So we've seen there some of the digital audio recording formats for 8mm tape. I should say that uh, VHS Camp wasn't left out here because there was a format from a company called Elisis called uh, ADAT which recorded on Super VHS tapes and offered very similar functionality to the DTRS format we've just seen. Now if you know any other 8mm digital audio formats, do tell me in the uh, comments below. In the meantime, do remember to like and share and above all subscribe so that I can do more videos of uh, similar nature on audio video technology in the future. Bye for now.